Uh, good evening, and uh, I want to take an opportunity to congratulate SpaceX for its successful launch. And uh, with my partner, Gwen Shotwell, the CEO, CEO ooh, getting ready to promote you, <laughs> the president of, of SpaceX here. And I also want to salute the NASA team that worked alongside them to, uh, to make tonight possible. I've been emphasizing to all of you, this was a critical event for NASA and the nation tonight. It was um, what I call a historical event in, uh, in the annals of spaceflight. Just over a year after the retirement of the space shuttle, we have returned space station cargo resupply missions to U.S. soil and are bringing jobs associated with this back, right back here to America. Let me repeat, we're once again launching spacecraft from American soil with the supplies our astronauts need in space. The SpaceX launch tonight marks the official start of commercial resupply missions by American companies operating out of U.S. spaceports like the one right here in Florida. Recently, another private company, Orbital Sciences, began pre-launch operations at the nation's newest spaceport, the Mid-Atlantic Spaceport in Wallops Island, Virginia. Rolling out its Antares rocket in preparation for cargo resupply demonstration flights. We're also making extraordinary progress to ensure American companies are launching our astronauts from U.S. soil in sourcing, this in sourcing this work and ending our dependence on foreign governments to get into space. We're handing off to the private sector our transportation to the International Space Station so that NASA can focus on what we do best exploring even deeper into our solar system with missions to an asteroid and Mars on the horizon. Under President Obama's leadership, NASA and the nation are embarking on an ambitious program of space exploration that will build on new technologies as well as proven capabilities as we expand our reach into the solar system. While reaching for new heights in space, we're creating new jobs right here on Earth. We're making steady progress in building the next generation deep space crew capsule and heavy lift rocket that will support human exploration missions to new destinations. We're enhancing use of the International Space Station to improve life on Earth and help make the next great leaps in scientific discovery and exploration. We're enhancing use of the International Space Station to improve life on Earth and help make the next great leaps in scientific discovery and exploration. As I've noted, we're partnering with American companies to create new transportation capabilities to reach low Earth orbit, simulate, stimulate, not simulate, stimulate the economy, and decrease our reliance on foreign launch providers. Our space technology program is developing technologies we need for tomorrow's missions. We're building and operating a balanced portfolio of groundbreaking science missions that will reach farther into the solar system, reveal unknown aspects of our universe, and provide critical data about our home planet. The Curiosity rover is making discoveries on the surface of Mars on an almost daily basis and is preparing the way for future human missions to the Red Planet. We're making steady progress on the James Webb Space Telescope, leading to its planned launch in 2018, when it again will revolutionize our understanding of our universe. And we're operating spacecraft that are speeding to Jupiter and Pluto and other destinations throughout the solar system. All the while, we're inspiring the next generation of scientists, technologists, engineers, and astronauts to keep the United States the world leader in space technology. But tonight, I really do want to take this opportunity to congratulate our teammates at SpaceX. Gwen, great job tonight. And I want to uh, introduce to you Gwen Shotwell, the SpaceX uh, president. Thank you, Charlie. Um, obviously, I want to take this opportunity to thank NASA um, and applaud the partnership that we've forged with them. Uh, it's a great evening. Dragon was inserted into a picture-perfect orbit. Uh, it's solar arrays deployed, and it's driving its way to station. So that's just awesome. So thanks very much, Charlie. I think we're going to take a few questions. Mr. Administrator. Uh, you talked about the benefit of this to to NASA, the, the history and, and the critical moment that this is. If you can kind of frame out a little bit and talk about the international context, how does this launch like this allow NASA to focus, refocus itself on having a leadership role in a kind of hyper-competitive space atmosphere with China and India catching up to the U.S.? Well, I think you've all, all of you have always heard me say I, I, I have a hard time understanding what people say when they talk about 
regaining a leadership role or whatever, we never lost it. Uh, what this does is it strengthens our position of leadership because, as I said, what we have done uh, with the president's leadership, to be quite honest, is we have put our faith in American industry. Uh, you know, this was not something tonight that NASA prepared, uh, built, uh, bought, did anything. SpaceX, as a private company and our partner, uh, produced what you saw tonight. That's American industry at its best. And uh, if you look at the, I call them kids and they're not kids. If, if you look at the employees at SpaceX, uh, they're energetic in what they do, they believe in what they do, and our, and our international partners are watching us and watching this because they too have to find innovative ways to do better the things that we've been doing in the past. And, and they're all very interested in, in seeing how SpaceX performs. So uh, I think we, we, we produce some believers tonight across the Atlantic and Pacific. Thank you. Administrator Bolden, uh, I'm Tarek Malik with uh, Space.com. <laughs> Charlie, um, I just wanted to ask, you know, with the successful operational flight for, for Dragon, or launch, pardon me, for, for Dragon uh, now, and, and it's heading to the station, what, um, what you see that as, as being either a harbinger or, or a uh, uh, kind of the, the, the gate opener for uh, commercial crew access, not just for NASA astronauts, but maybe uh, other Americans uh, who want to fly in space. Uh, you know, what, what you see this in terms of a watershed moment for a, a USB you know, I, In the space business, we don't get a lot of X's or N's is the, the, the term, okay, which means experiences. Every time we fly successfully is another N on the checklist. Uh, Gwen needs N's, I need N's. Uh, this was an incredible N on the way to commercial crew capability. Uh, for a number of reasons, because as all of you know, SpaceX is one of the three companies that we selected to partner with us in the development of a commercial crew capability. Um, you know, every time they have a successful mission, then, then that gives the non-believers one more opportunity to get on board and root for us and help us make this thing happen that we know can happen. Uh, this was a big night. And we'll take maybe one more question, because I've got to get Gwen. She has to go to a real press conference, and I get to skip out. Well, hey, it's Bill Harwood, CBS News. And actually, uh, hey, Charlie. <laughs> um, I got one quick one for Gwen. And like you say, I know there's a news conference coming up, uh, but everybody's got a deadline. As you can see all the social media around here, that's the way it works these days. Um, obviously, you hit Apogee and Perigee right where you wanted, but it seemed like first stage burned a little longer. Maybe that's just my misinterpreting the audio. I was just wondering if, as far as you know, all the numbers were where they were supposed to be for first stage burn. Thanks. I know Dragon was inserted exactly where it needed to go. Right after that, basically, I jumped in a car and came here. I'm going to try to pull up some data before I get into the 10 o'clock. Thank you all very much.